Hello and welcome to the IT Lab, where I build and test IT solutions. In today's lab, I test a Win32 app in Intune with a twist. The app is a printer. No, I haven't gone mad. While this may not be the obvious choice, I'll show you why it's a good choice. Just like any other app, installing a printer requires running some commands, adding some supporting files, in this case driver files, and some way of allowing Intune to work out if the printer is installed already. Since all files required by the printer install can be packaged easily in Intune, I thought this was worth investigating. When doing any application packaging, a test computer should be used to make sure the install, uninstall and detection methods work as expected. In this lab I have my test computer here, and I'll use this to test the manual steps needed to install the printer using PowerShell. Whenever packaging software, the first step usually involves downloading the software. Since my app is a printer, I went ahead and downloaded the universal print drivers from the HP site. After extracting the files and giving the folder a name, I moved the folder to the C drive. This will be my working directory for my app package. Next, I ran through the steps manually to install the printer. There's a command line program built into Windows to add the drivers to the driver store named PNPUtil. I needed to use this to make the driver available on the system before trying to install the driver. It's a command line tool with switches. The second switch uses a wildcard to search for any driver files in the folder, and the last switch searches any subfolders for the driver INF files. But wait a minute, I want to use PowerShell, not the command line. What is this, the 2010s? So I created a variable to hold the switch arguments, and then used the start process PowerShell command. This is used to run exe programs and pass arguments to the program. The wait command, unsurprisingly, waits for running processes to end. The command ran successfully, meaning the drivers were ready to be installed, but I first needed to find out the name of the driver assigned to my model of printer in the correct INF file. The only problem? The universal print driver package I downloaded includes, I'm guessing, hundreds of HP printer models. Luckily, I can open the folder in Visual Studio Code and search all the files in one go for the model of printer I'm looking for. I found the printer under the generic driver name of HP Universal Printing, PCL6. The command add printer driver installs the correct driver from the driver store based on the name provided. The confirm argument is set to false to suppress any confirmation prompts which is particularly useful when used in scripts. Before installing the printer, I added the printer port using a name based on its IP address, and then I set the IP address of the printer for this port. Now I was ready to install the printer using the add printer command along with the name of test printer. The driver name in the INF file, the port name that I set up in the previous step, and the confirm argument set to false. This step can take a few minutes, especially if the printer's offline. I verified that the printer was installed by looking in the system settings. The model name matched, the port was created with the correct name, and the driver files were in place. Next, I needed to test the uninstallation process. This was as easy as using the remove printer command using the name of the printer I chose previously. To clean up, I also removed the printer port. Checking in the settings confirmed that the printer was not there anymore. With both install and uninstall methods tested, I went ahead and created the PowerShell scripts. As is good practice, I created variables for each of the values needed for the printer install. I also added the command line arguments for the PNP utility. 
As per the testing, I added the commands used earlier and replaced the values with the names of the variables. For the uninstall script, I did the same by defining variables with values. And finally use the remove commands to remove the printer and port. Another script is needed by Intune to be used as a detection method to check if the printer is already installed. From what I've seen, most people use the approach of checking if a registry key exists. I think the cleaner approach is to use PowerShell to do the detection instead. For the detection script to work, Intune requires that it returns output to screen, also known as standard output. The good thing about any get command in PowerShell is that it returns output on screen and returns 0 for success and 1 for error. By using the get printer command, using the printer's name, the script will detect the installation status of the printer. Simple, huh? With everything ready, I copied the install and uninstall scripts to my working directory, ready for packaging using the Win32 content prep tool. This standalone EXE program can be downloaded from the Microsoft GitHub repo. To package the files, I specify the source folder which contains all files required for the package. The setup file is the PowerShell install file, and the output folder is an empty folder I created. The last option is not applicable, so I set this to no. I verified the package file had been created in my output folder. This file now contained everything Intune needed to install and uninstall my printer. In the Intune Admin Center, this was a computer I set up to test the app deployment. In Intune Apps, the app to be created is targeting a Windows OS, and the app type is Win32. Here I uploaded the Intune package file, which uploads all the driver files and scripts that I created earlier. On the next screen, I set the name, description, and publisher fields. Not shown here, but I set the name of this app to Kiosk Printer. The install command tells Intune which script to run, and you'll notice that I set a full path for PowerShell using the sys native folder. This is because I want to force Intune to run PowerShell as a 64 bit instance. I also set the execution policy to bypass to override the default setting of restricted, otherwise, the script will be blocked by Windows. Finally, I specified the install script from the uploaded package. I did the same thing for the uninstall command and restricted the user from removing the printer. In the app requirements, I only accept 64-bit Windows and at least a 23H2 version of Windows 11. Next comes the detection script that Intune will use to figure out if the printer needs to be installed. As I said before, I think it's a cleaner way to handle detection. I've also found that it's a more reliable method, especially when using Autopilot to provision computers. Lastly, I assigned the security group to this app, which contains the test computer I showed earlier. Once an app is created, it can take a while for the computer to sync with Intune and for the app to install. After about 15 minutes, I checked the test computer in the Managed App section and found my Kiosk Printer app listed. This means the test computer has received the instruction from Intune to install the app. Next, I checked the App section to see the installation status of the app. According to the Intune report, the app was installed. The final test was to log into the test computer and verify the printer was installed. It was installed and I was happy to call this lab a success. Using simple PowerShell scripts and Intune, application packaging is much easier than it used to be, whether that's a software app or a printer install. Installing printers as apps from Intune 
also makes it easier to manage and deploy network printers. If you've made it to the end of this lab, I think you'll want to subscribe to this channel, probably check out some of my other videos, and perhaps leave a comment or two. Anyway, I'll see you next time.